Richard Hart here. With me is Singularity.net founder, Ben Gertzel. Am I pronouncing that right? That's right, Ben Gertzel. All right. All right. Yeah, good to meet you. You may have seen Ben on Joe Rogan. Um, he's also, I don't know, you've done other cool stuff, I think. What's other cool stuff you've done? Well, I've been doing AI for 30 years, so I mean, okay. I, I introduced the idea of artificial general intelligence something okay. like, like 15 years ago, and right. uh, now, last two years, I've been working on the intersection of, of AI and, and blockchain, right? Cool. Which, is, which is what I was talking about here at Blockchain today. Right. Did you lose a bet? Were you forced to wear that hat, or did you choose voluntarily? <laughs> Uh, this hat was it, it was given to me by uh, some aliens in the area of 51. But that's, nice. Uh, All right. That's, uh, yeah, th I can't I can't talk about that in detail. So. It's probably advanced technology yeah, hiding under right, there. That's right. Yeah. So I uh, I actually volunteered for the SENS Foundation, S E N S Strategies oh, yeah, yeah. for Engineered Negligible Spaces. Yeah, yeah. Aubrey de Grey is a good friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. So I did that back in 2006, I believe. I shot the video for their first or their second uh, SENS meetup kind of thing in Cambridge. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I, I tried as my first thing, because I retired back in 2003, I tried to, you know, spread the word about uh, longevity technology, and I grew a beard, not to Aubrey's level. Uh -huh. Now I got mine to go about here, and his goes about, you know, uh -huh. four times longer. So one of the things I ran into when trying to popularize longevity technology is that people have a lot of misconceptions, and they truly don't like the idea. So one misconception they have is that you'll get old and then stay old for a long time, which is called the Tithonus era. Yeah. Right? So there was this uh, Greek or Roman myth, I believe Greek, where a guy was granted everlasting life, but as an extremely old dude. He wished it would end, but he couldn't get it to end kind of thing. Well, it turns out, longevity tech, we can only keep you alive if you're already robust. If you're already frail, we can't really help you very much. So uh, have you seen Greg Fahey at the... the Radfest event a few weeks ago, Revolution Against Aging and Death. Greg Fahey, who's a good friend of mine from the company 21st Century Medicine in California, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he presented some pilot results of a small study where for a year of taking a cer certain combination of hormones and medicines, people decrease their biological age by more than two years. So this That's great. Reju rejuvenation therapy, yep. right? I'm, I'm very uh, interested in metformin, senolytics, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the chemical compounds. So I, I think we're starting to see already some results of, of actually not only life extension, but actually re 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 regeneration, re re yeah. reju rejuvenation, so, right? And I, I think... Uh, AI can play a big role in ex accelerating this, although of course it, it's, Maybe. It's, it's not the whole story. It's hard. We have very bad data currently. So I think, I think one of the, the reason that, that rejuvenation excites him so much, I believe, is because there's a concept called longevity escape velocity. And if you can regenerate one year of life every year that you age, you won't die from age. You'll die by accident at 600 years of age unless you change your lifestyle habits. Or make, or make some backup copies. Yeah. Now this we could debate. Yeah. So I believe yeah. firmly that memory and consciousness does not live on top of a biological substrate. I believe that memory and consciousness is the biological substrate. So if, if it is the case that the memory is the meat, then you can only do mind uploading and copying of people if you can generate molecularly level copies of their meat. But the molecules in your brain are not the same ones that were there five years ago. They're being refreshed continually. That's very Deepak Chopra, woo-woo-ish way that, to no, look that, at things. But that is the case. That, that's True. just physics. Yes. So. However, epigenetics makes it so that that system which allows that to continue is not, you can't cold boot that. You can't, you can't look at old DNA from a dinosaur and cold boot it. You needed to see epigenetically how it evolved yeah. in the womb, and you just lose that data. So there's data that happens in the process that you can't just, you can't just recreate from a snapshot. Um, my, my, my point is that because the molecules in your brain are not the same ones that were there years ago, then the knowledge must be in some way in the pattern of organization rather than in, in, in the specific atoms I, I agree and molecules. that there is systemic information that would allow you to make things similar. You could learn. There, there is a lot to be learned there. Um, like, I, I think that mind uploading is a very funny concept. I believe that transhumanists have a, 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 a defect, which is sad, that these are very smart, very creative people who are time-shifting their focus into the problems they will never get to have. 
every single transhumanist that has ever lived has died a sad death. I mean, if you look at Ray Kurzweil, he's no, taken every pill some, there is. Some died a happy death. Perhaps, yeah. true. Ray Kurzweil looks Timothy a year older Leary every year. Yeah. Ray Kurzweil is not going to make it. His ass is going to die before he wants to die. And all of the cool science fiction-y things that we all come up with and dream of are all a future that we could live in if we cured the meat. We need more people working on the biology and the meat today so that we can earn the problems of the future, right? Like overcrowding and uh, dictators that never die and all these other fanciful things. I look forward to having those problems by not just dying when my grandparents did and when my dog did, right? So I want, I want there to be more medical research. Now, AI could, could accelerate that progress. Um, I, I, I think that AI and materials technology and uh, maybe blockchain for efficiency and economy if it gets scaled, which it doesn't have right now, those are three things that could really change the whole world, change the relationship of a man of government. These are the most important things you can work out in the world. Just like Aubrey. If Aubrey wasn't doing longevity, he would be doing AI. And that's what he did before he did longevity. Indeed. Because it's the best stuff you can do. Yeah, I think uh, I have a lot of respect for what Aubrey's doing with, with SENS and many of the research projects SENS is funding. We have had for a long time a friendly disagreement on the uh, relative degree of importance of, of AI for, for, for curing aging. And I mean, he, uh, uh, Aubrey can see a value for it, but sees it as sort of relatively low down in, 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 in the hierarchy and is, is focusing more on laboratory experiments to explore specific hypotheses that, right. that he's had. Whereas I, I, I'm more inclined to think we need to do massive data immigration, integration and systems biology simulation coupled with machine learning analytics. But in, in, in the end, in the end, I mean, we, we can and should do all of these things. Sure. Right? It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a matter of picking and choosing system biology versus machine learning versus, you know, well-chosen lab experiments. We, we should, well, be, we, doing, we this we should be doing folding. all these things in parallel. So we, we did protein folding on, on Blink, B-O-I-N-C, across millions of computers for a decade or more, and machine the results learning, were Machine not learning that, is doing better now. Okay. Because, I mean... Google DeepMind has solved protein folding dramatically better than traditional bioinformatics right. approaches without AI did. So right. protein folding is a case where AI has done just right. astoundingly better yep. than, than traditional yep. bioinformatics or biology-driven yep. methods. I think a lot of stuff should just be called machine learning more than AI. Well, but like, what, what, so, wor what words one right. uses aren't yeah, the most important true. thing. So, interesting thing that you guys might not know about AI and machine learning. Once the computer figures something out, you do not understand how it figured it out. And that's crazy. It's like, you're like, yes, it works awesome, and it beats the humans, and it beats anything that's ever existed, but we have absolutely no idea how. And that's a little bit risky because, you know, if it comes to decide that one day the right solution is to get rid of the humans, it might not give you the heads up. So then there's these things you do where you're trying to trap it and get it to admit that it's going to try and kill you, you know? Well, I, I think you don't know the details of how the AI makes its predictions and judgments in each case, but it, it's not really the case that you have absolutely... Well, you know what input the, it was given. And you know what... You can assign the, an AI to analyze the AI. In the case of a neural network, you know what network architecture it has, and you know what hyperparameters it, it, it has, and, 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 and often why. And I would similarly say, when a human comes to a decision, we also don't generally have a clear idea True. of why they came to that decision. Right. And the story they tell about but they could at why least they... They could try and tell you. But it's usually... Usually half right. as, as we know from neuroscience, yeah. the stories that humans tell right. regarding the reasons of their actions are often not accurate. So that may not be a problem with AI, right. but just a problem with complex yeah. intelligent systems. Right. And the, the declarative part that makes summaries and tells stories right. is just an approximation yep. of, the, of the actual and decision It's all approximations, function. pretty much, except and math. Everything that's not math is an approximation. And if we want to cure aging, yeah. we're dealing with a very The most complex, complex system in the universe. Confused, we don't know that, but we're dealing with well, a very complex the known universe. system. And I, I think it's the most complex in the known universe. I mean, there's nothing that has more moving parts that I'm aware of. 
there might be some other alien biology that's vastly superior that because the speed of light is always C, it's just too far away for us to see. Yeah. Anyway, curing aging will be a very hard problem. I agree yeah. with you. It's a, progress is progress, right? It's a very important problem. Yeah. And on a historical time scale, progress is being made wonderfully, right? Like it, on the other hand, from the standpoint of, of each of us, it could it's be the, it's it could be frustrating if aging is solved in, in 2070 rather right. than 2040. Right. Yeah. On the scope of the history of humanity, yeah. it really yeah. doesn't matter if it happens so, 30 years later, yeah. right? So, 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 interestingly enough, we've had no progress at all in lifespan, which is 122 max. We've had compression and morbidity, where we are more likely to reach deeper towards 122. So we've, we've got increases in life expectancy, a lot from having babies live longer early on, yeah. and we haven't had any movement at all in lifespan. But we've increased lifespan of nematode worms. Right, like if you're a worm or like a mouse, you're like flies, much better. I mean, through <laughs> with my work with uh, Michael Rose and Janeshin, I mean, first Michael Rose created fruit flies that live now five times as long as regular fruit flies by experimental right. evolution. Right. But then by giving flies just the right combination of drugs and, and supplements and such, you can also extend the lifespan of normal flies right. toward those of the of the Methuselah flies created right. by, by experimental so, evolution. And that you know that the mice created by performance genomics in Canada by experimental evolution double the lifespan of the con right. con control mice. So I mean, I think so that, from a science perspective, there is interesting progress. And you could get more progress on the simpler creatures because they already don't have well, the Well, the lifespan repair. is shorter. It's easier to do the experiments. Right. So we already live a long time. So we've already utilized some of the low-hanging fruit of repair and maintenance. And so it's harder for us to get longer lifespans out of longer living creatures than it is out of shorter living creatures. Of course. Um, but I, I think, uh, you know, we're at a time of incredible progress in biology as, as well as AI and, and, and computer simulations. And so, I, so if I, your I AI think, thing works out, what's, what's the low-hanging fruit that you think you might actually be able to make progress on? In, term, in terms of, of longevity well, you, I mean, if you have a project that got money to do AI stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So you want to do AI stuff. So some AI stuff's harder, some stuff's easier. Google chose to do Go and uh, StarCraft most recently. Playing, playing games, playing games, of course, is easier in a way than solving real problems because you, you have a restricted you, decision you, you're, set. You're, you're in a delimited universe. Yeah, I think right. in terms of real progress toward general intelligence, what. What I think is going to be the most direct approach is, is a robot preschool. So the work we've done with Sophia, Philip K. Dick, the other Hanson robots, this is sort of prototyping in that direction. I'd, I'd like to make a robot that you know, has a human-like form, arms that are good at manipulating stuff, can move around, right. and have it learn to do everything a three- or four-year-old kid can, can, can right. do in a sort of preschool and, uh, and, and playroom type environment. I think then... You're, you're getting common sense knowledge into AI about, about you know, perception, action, movement, language, right. social interaction, planning, and th this, this, I think, can have indirect impact for longevity research, mathematics, finance, all sorts of different things, because you're getting the crux of right. common sense understanding right. of, the, of re the everyday world. Now, in, Could be. Could in, work, maybe. In, in biology in, in, in particular, I really think it's the intersection of machine learning with, with systems biology simulation that, so, that's So we need be better critical. data. So you've got, you've got two things. You've got training sets that you can train your model against, and then you've got models, and then you've got hardware that runs the model, such as TPUs from Google, right, tensor sure. processing units, and you've got open source projects like Keras and TensorFlow, so that, that's really all you have. You've got hardware, you've got modeling, and then you've got data, and we don't really have great data on the biological side. Like, I don't know what your temperature is, I don't know what your glucose level is, and for me to find that out, I basically have to poke holes in it. Like, if we have better data inputs, man, I bet AI can do great things. So I, I think we need better 
data inputs, better models. I think the hardware is okay. Like that's that's about as good as we can get it. Well, AI has not yet been systematically applied to even all the data that's, that's right. been gathered. True. Though. So I mean, gathering more data is going to be valuable, and in particular, more data about system <coughs> dynamics is, is, is going to be important. And when you say system dynamics, what do you mean? Change of a biological system over over time. Okay. So, for example, with the Methuselah flies, we work with these flies that live five times as long as, as, as normal flies. I mean, we had SNP data, which is, is the genetic variations in the flies that they had at birth. We had gene expression data from the long-lived flies versus control flies. Right. We never had gene expression data gathered like every day or even every week over the course of the fly's life. Right. From different tissues of the fly, like right. a, a, a and nervous different. system, like its heart. And if you had time series gene expression data from each tissue of the fly, you'd be able to form a picture. It'd be a very unhappy fly. <laughs> the fly would be like, ouch, well, you, stop sampling me. No, no, you, I mean, you must have a fly <laughs> to get its DNA. So you, you're assuming you have a population yeah, of flies yeah. that are relatively genetically homogeneous. Yeah, yeah. So to, to get its DNA, you're, <laughs> you're making like a fly <laughs> compost or something. You're oh, squishing up a bunch of flies and, yeah. and then, and then, then Better doing than the, us. Then you're doing the DNA or yeah. RNA, RNA extraction from the, the I don't, I don't fly people... mush. But I, I think the, the point is, for, for example, my friend João Pedro Magalhaes is a longevity researcher. Right. He has a theory that a key cause of aging is antagonistic pleiotropy relating to developmental genes. So okay. it's, it's genes that play a role in development, right. but then that after a certain age, supposed to they go keep away. doing what they, right. well, not that they're supposed to go away, right. but they're supposed to Turn stop off. doing what they were, yeah. they're supposed to stop doing what they were doing during right. development right. and maybe start doing something else. Right. But instead, some genes keep doing yeah. what they were doing during development later in life, which may have negative impacts. Right. So is that, the correct theory, or better put, how how important is that phenomenon right. for aging? We had that in World War II. There was a guy that yeah. was stuck on a Japanese island, and he just right. wouldn't believe that World War II was over. So you could you could test how important is antagonistic pleiotropy relating right. to developmental function. You right. could test that by looking at these Methuselah flies. Right. If you had you know time series gene expression data yeah. at multiple points during during the fly's life. Right. And the only reason we don't have that data is is money. It's right. Basically, yep. it's just. A, we and need more money and more researchers doing things that could heal human beings. The people are the most important thing going on here. If the humans don't work out, everything here will be permanently extinct because another meteor will strike and kill everything here again, inevitably. Even the sun will expand and consume this planet. If the humans don't figure it out, all life here is permanently extinct. Well, the we, humans have to figure it out and they can export the life to other places. We have places. a while until the, until the sun goes... <laughs> It was like 1.2 billion goes, years goes, or something. Goes supernova. So <laughs> I think I'm, I'm I'm hoping we can uh, right. we can solve these problems, but before so that point in time, I, we right. were supposed to talk. So I, I liked I've been talking about blockchain all day long. I don't <laughs> think it's as exciting as biology and longevity, but maybe you've got something exciting going on that you is new. Apparently, there's some PayPal thing or so. Blockchain clearly is not as fundamental a technology as artificial intelligence, but. On the other hand, neither is TCP/IP as right. fundamental in technology as AI. Yep. But it's really good the internet yep. is there yep. as, as as part of the infrastructure for mm -hmm. our AI systems, right? So I mean, it'd be it, hard to get the data. You'd have to use the sneaker net to move the data yeah. around. So I mean, in, in in a similar way, I think blockchain is a critical part of the infrastructure we need for AI and for other complex in, information systems. And I mean, the core problem that blockchain solves is how to create a complex network of computing processes that doesn't have a centralized controller. And, and this, this can be highly valuable due to the properties of the, of, of the human world and, and, right. and, and, the, and the human economy. So as, right. as AI gets smarter and smarter, it's great if we can have a network of AIs that isn't controlled by one company or one what, what government. What do you think about Neuralink? Oh, Elon, Elon Musk's uh, human immigration well, machine. Th there hasn't really been enough published on Neuralink right. for me to assess right. that technology versus What do you others? feel about I, the idea of human uh, I mean, cyborg cause there, hybrids? There's a whole bunch of other projects besides Neuralink that are maybe a little stealthier and not getting as much media right. that are focused on 
on, on, on the same goal, right? right so I right. think on the whole, getting AI connected with the human brain to be able to interface human brains with each other, interface human brains with computers, make man-machine hybrids. This this will be. Would you it, be? It'll be. It'll be also a very a very valuable technology. I mean, it's not it's not something I'm personally working on at, at, at the moment, but I think once the interfacing technology is a little more mature, right. there'll be a real need for AI technology to decode what's right. happening in, 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 in the human brain, because you're not going to be able to write, right. you're not going to be able to write to, by hand right. the, the, the code to decode the population coding right. in, in, in the cortex, right? That's going to have to be I, an AI doing the translation. I, I think it's going to be funny when the first person gets hacked by 4chan, their yeah. soul gets hacked, and then you're going to be like, ah, I don't know, this, uh, this human hybrid thing, I felt better about it before, now I'm just a meme. <laughs> you know? yeah. you're, you're dancing around. Uh, Doing. Well, maybe the memes will become the first, <laughs> the first AGIs, right? Would so, you, what would you do if, if someone made a copy of you, and you needed its organs? Would you kill it for the organs? Well, <laughs> I, I would hope we could just clone the organs by that point, which is. But probably, you can't make a movie out of that. That's I probably mean. an easier problem than cloning, <laughs> cloning the whole person. Yeah. So, I mean, regarding blockchain, right. I think the AI community right now is becoming increasingly centralized in a few large companies and governments right. and yeah. the same is true with biomedical they need money. They need same money. is true with biomedical research yeah. i mean there's a small number of pharma companies and they've made more progress on applying ai and machine learning to large swaths of data than anybody else they got the money but but it's locked in their yeah. proprietary Silo. information silos yeah. well, that's what your the, project's supposed yeah, to solve even though the data comes from yeah. individual yeah. people's yep. bodies right yep. so the data that comes from you're in my body yep. and is put into informational form on the internet yep. you know most people who contributed that data would rather that data was used in, a more, in a more free and open way yep. to help them and other people live longer. That's a great place than, for regulation. Rather, rather than being used in, in a more restrictive open way. Open sourcing that data is a wonderful place for regulation because we are not going to make progress as a species if we can't tell what's going on. We need those measurements to do good data analytics, to do good AI and machine learning, to do basic science and come up with better hypotheses to test. We need the damn data. It's a, it's a yeah. tragedy that lives in the silos. So this is part of our goal with oh. SingularityNet as a blockchain-based AI platform, and then Rejuve, which is a spin-off of SingularityNet, specifically aimed at applying AI to biological data right. regarding regarding long, longevity and right. gather, gathering data from people yeah. into secure blockchain-based medical data wallets, and then applying AI to to crunch this data to d discover discover new things. And but then you can launch these decentralized networks. The technologies there. Then we need to get adoption for these networks. Right. And I mean this. This is what I was talking about in my talk today. It comes down to some prosaic stuff, like we've just integrated a PayPal interface to SingularityNet, which means if you need AI services from the SingularityNet network. Now when you say you, AI you, services, what does that mean? Well, it, it could be an AI that answers questions on, on a certain domain, mm -hmm. say medical questions. It could it could be an AI that recognizes what's in an image or video. Okay. It, it, it can it can be an AI. You should AI. call up Elon Musk and say, "Hey, we can solve your auto driving thing." <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's more of a custom thing because it requires his proprietary data right. from the Teslas, yeah. right? So we do have some bio AI on there where you can okay. upload a a gene expression or SNP data set. Right. Then we have AI running in the singularity net network that will sort of look at what are the most important features in that right. data set and, and cross correlate it with a number of different biology databases to right. find to find what are the concepts and processes that are most that are most important there. Right. But that I mean the this is a general purpose AI platform where anyone can put an AI into it and cool. then and then anyone can access those services. The, we put some biology stuff in there in partnership with a bioinformatics company called Moza Health, just because we knew them and we wanted right. the platform used for that. Right. The point of the PayPal interface as sort of part of the plumbing is just there's a lot of people who 
they're willing to pay to use these AI services, but they don't have a crypto wallet, right? right. So, that, so then they can they can pay with with, re, with right. regular money through right. PayPal. There's going to be a fee. Right. So I mean, if they want a minimum cost on average, right. they should be paying with the native AGI token. But if they just want to get their feet wet, they right. can just use their credit card and pay. Right. And, and that will be an easier way to get traction on the network. I'd say a lot more people have PayPal than they've got crypto wallets. Unfortunately, that's true at the moment. It's I likely mean, to I mean, be that I, way for a while. I, I imagine. I mean, yeah. PayPal, as you would know, originated as, 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 as a way of bypassing the, the fiat currency Originally, uh, monopoly. PayPal was designed to create yeah. a competitive currency with the U.S. dollar. It's yeah, their yeah. original intention. Seems to have yeah. drifted a bit from that intention. They uh, got slightly time. corrupted yeah. by uh, the powers that be. Yeah. But it worked out. I mean, it's a good product. I don't have it's any problem. It's a good product, and I'm, I'm happy that we're, that we're now interfacing with it. But that's a matter of wanting to drive adoption of this yeah. decentralized AI network. Yeah. So there's more and more AI on this sort of open, decentralized platform. So then this decentralized AI network can help do things like cure aging and, and, yep. and power robots and yep. all, all these other applications. Like, I, I, think, I think if people understood that machines can answer useful questions one by one without, you, you just need, I don't need my car to be able to make me toast. I just need it to be able to drive well. Yeah. That's good progress enough, right? So AI that is non-general is awesome. We should have more of it and it makes great progress in the world, and it, I think it can make everything more efficient. Personally, I, I think one of the major roles for general intelligence is going to be coordinating all these narrow AIs. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's true. I don't especially want a general intelligence driving my car. It may just get distracted. Make it bored. Yeah, I mean, you, you want a system that is just really good at doing that narrow <laughs> task. On the other hand, for curing aging, right. it's less clear because we well, might need to get more creative. And yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. There, 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 there are aspects of right. imagination and innovation. So, right. take for example the issue of stiffening of the extracellular matrix. Right. You have these cro cross-linked molecules like glucosapine like molecules and stuff. Enzymes. Right. So how how do you, how do you solve that? So. You know, I've been talking to Christian Schaffmeister, who's a, a friend of mine at Temple University, and he has the idea you can use these spiral ligamer molecules he's created, which are, are novel, novel polymers that are not strictly organic. He wants to use them to make a molecular scissors, like so a like nanomachine, just go in and cut them, and cut them, right? So the thing is, now, I hope that will work. I'm right. not sure it will work. The right. point is, that's a cool creative that's a good solution, idea. right? Now, yeah. If you want the AI to come up with its own cool creative solution, needs like flexibility. That, then you're getting toward general intelligence. Right. So for right. a really hard problem where the data that you've gathered so far needs to be extended from imaginatively, right. then, then you need something moving toward general intelligence. Right. And indeed, for driving a car or, say, doing LASIK on your eyes or something, yeah. You just want a narrow AI that's well-tuned yeah. for that purpose. And there's going to be a spectrum of AIs yeah. at various levels of generality, and they can all talk to each other via platforms like Singularity. Right. I think I think it's, it's interesting to note that unless we extinct ourselves, this is inevitable. It is going to happen. We will make progress in life and extension. We will make progress in AI. It's just a question of whether you get to be alive to see it. It's going to happen. And I prefer yeah. it to happen while I'm still able to speak and move. And, you know. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is what my mother said. And she's in her mid-70s now. Right. I asked her if, if she wanted to live forever. Right. And at first she said, well, you know, I'm not that important. Why should I keep consuming resources for more and more time? Right. Let well, she someone, is a resource. Let someone she is a resource. come and do it. And, but she said, well, you know, I'm, I'm really curious to see what is going to be happening on this planet in 500 years from now. You know I'd what? be really ashamed not to witness it myself. Lunch and, tastes good. Yeah. So I'm just happy for lunch. Yeah. So like if I get to live for just lunch, cool. Like that's good. It's good. Well, you, you should be careful because if the super AI hears that, <laughs> you're going to be locked oh, no. in a room oh, no. with nothing but lunch, <laughs> lunch, lunch, lunch for 10 trillion years. I'm going to have to be very years. PC around that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's good talking. To, I love that people are focused on something that can do paradigm shifts, can influence our existence. Like, 
it, when some of these things work, it changes everything about being human. Like the screen, the screen changed everything about being human now. The internet changed everything about being human for, for the Western world. And I and I think AI is well, life extension China to do as that. well. I mean, yeah, yeah. sure. It's a pleasure meeting you, man. All right. Is there any other stuff you want to talk no, about I your project? That... Go to your website, singularity dot singularitynet.io you can find right. out more about the project and uh, yeah if you're developing AI or using AI uh, please go to the, the beta and you, you use the platform right then then everyone who uses the platform is helping to build the decentralized AI network which is, uh, is working toward all these amazing uh, transhumanist and humanist goals we've been talking about here. If you guys uh, like talking about these kind of things, uh, follow me on Twitter, Richard Hart Win, uh, YouTube, Richard Hart, uh, giving away free coins to people that hold Bitcoin. It's the world's first blockchain CD. So you're working on uh, innovation in uh, computing and AI. I'm working in innovation in banking. It's weird. For some reason, the three most popular products in the bank are savings account, checks and account, and the time deposit, where they pay you more interest if you lock longer. Uh. It doesn't exist in crypto. There's just no way to get paid more if you lock longer, so we invented it, uh. and uh, we're, we're launching in the next two or three weeks, and on, I'm very on, excited on, about on it. Bitcoin, then. Well, you can claim it for free if you have Bitcoin. You sign a signature that says, I'd like to claim my hex. You put it on an Ethereum network. It evaluates it and says, yes, you did have Bitcoin in the snapshot. And checks the box, and now you can't claim twice. You only claim once. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you are referred by somebody, you get 10% more. If you claim the first day, you get 20% more. And then, uh, if you don't claim, everything you start to bleed. All your coins go away. We give all your coins away to people that that did claim. And so, there's a there's a carrot if you get in early. There's a stick if you don't get in early. And then we've got referrals. So right now, there's a lot of scams in crypto, and they use advanced Ooh. tactics. They use referral programs, they use time-limited offers. Yeah. And we're adopting those same strategies, but without the scam part. So I it's see. audited, trustless, uh, you know, so you can get the same type of price appreciation. Mm -hmm. And then using time locking, like vesting in a startup, you should get a better sharp ratio with less volatility yeah. because you know the future market supply, yeah, not just sense. the future total supply. Because yeah. you don't know if Satoshi's gonna sell. I mean, the vo volatility is much, high, is much higher than in traditional finance. Yes. But the same basic math should apply. And yeah. if, but if you're on the right side of that volatility, it can give you outsized returns that have never been seen in the history of mankind. It happens from ever. time to time. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. very lucky to yeah. be alive at this moment when paradigm shifts are really happening. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we can get multiple paradigm shifts like within our career, right? And True. That, 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 that never happened before, right? True. Now true. you can be way ahead of your time and you can just wait a couple of years and New suddenly, time. suddenly the world has <laughs> caught up with a few of your ideas, right? Yeah, so that, true. That's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. It was great talking to you, man. All right. Thanks Good meeting you. Yeah.